there are too many liars in this world too many liars according to google let me check google let me check how many population the number of population we have for now according to google uh the population of the world so according to google the population of the world as of 2023 is approximately though these data are just they are not fully confirmed but there are still speculation about what the population of the world could have been it either is a little bit higher or a little bit lower but it's still always within the range that is being speculated by uh, the UN estimation. The UN estimation for now is uh, 8 billion, 45 million, 311,447. But you and I know that uh, people have been born into this world on a daily basis by the seconds. And people buy away die away from this world by the second as well due to so many factors age health issue war issues and stuff like that but out of this eight approximately or assumed eight billion people i doubt if there are up to hundred thousand people in this world that are very very honest i doubt a lot of people are honest in some other areas but when it comes to belief and religion it turns to something else entirely so today i'm going to continue the part two of the topic i once discussed with you guys which is religion versus spirituality this is the part two version uh it's it is long overdue anyway i ought to have done this a very long time ago but quite unfortunate i've been occupied with one thing or the other uh spirituality versus religion religion versus spirituality this is the part two i want to start by this first displaying um a picture which you're going to be seeing beside my video here and to probably do a, a little bit of brief analysis about it few days ago i stumbled upon this story and I've been willing to talk, talk about it. It was even the one that promotes, or let me say that encourages me to probably go into this uh, religious versus spirituality part two on time because I could have been doing something else. I could have done odd news or other topic. A few days ago, a uh, punch newspaper in Nigeria reported a statement of one of your top GUs who was talking about the economy. According to Punch newspaper, he said the economy, Nigeria will bounce back stronger than dollars soon, says Adeboye. Uh, Pastor Enoch Adeboye is the general overseer of uh, Redeemed Christian Church, RCCG, uh, worldwide. If I'm to probably use that. Uh, I quite remember there was a time it was removed. I'm not probably to talk about him personally on a personal time. If I want to start talking on a personal term about each and every individual pastor, we are not going to live here because I'm going to have a, you know, we were told that Christ was nailed on the cross of Calvary. Them, they are to be nailed everywhere, everywhere. But I'm going to talk about the logic aspect of religion. And I quite remember if we are to be honest, uh, every human being was born with form but void. Uh, or should I say every human being was, uh, you know, when the Bible, the so-called Bible said the world was without form and void, it means there was emptiness, darkness upon the face, the surface of the universe. There was nothing. So I believe the human brain, some part of the human brain was without form and void too until we all came to this world. And in 21st century, this is 2023 for goodness sake, should there be anybody 
who was given something or should there be anyone on head now who had received knowledge from the people of the head and yet they do not question it because i still don't see reasons why people can easily just sit down and not question things that has that is being handed over to them when i was young i'm sure the only thing i will know are the embedded memories in me on how to react cry when i needed attention from my parents or from my mother or something and suck naturally i don't think any like in my first video i, I said it no child is being trained on how to suck you just do that naturally you grab your mother's boobs or breast or whatever you call it place your mouth or your teeth or your you know on the titties and then you start to suck in the milk from the from the from the breast but these are things they don't teach human being but every other thing the system of the world was taught to human and that was why i concluded that every human or almost all the people who dwell the dwellers of this earth are liars and what do i mean by liars if you check the dictionary meaning of what a lie is all about I'm going to be placing it here. What is a lie? So a lie means a person who tells lies. You know, a deceiver, a falsifier. That's what lies means. When you tell the opposite of what is true or what is real. And that is what has been given unto us in terms of religion. Karl Marx, you know, said, Karl Marx believed that religion like an opiate gave a sense of security and salvation of something yet to come however he claimed that this was an illusion he believed that religion is an illusion he felt that religion taught individuals to focus on other worldly concerns and not on the immediate poverty they were suffering in another word he once be he once said that religion is the hope of the hopeless it's just like when you open something that might never come, religious give you this false illusion of what is about to come. So what is religion itself? In my previous definition of religion, I think I'm, I once mentioned it as a belief in worship of a superhuman, <laughs> superhuman or the superhuman power or powers, especially a god or gods, you know, a particular system of faith worship a particular system of faith and worship so why will you sit down and say how did religion came to this world i believe one person somebody or a group of people came up with the concept and the concept is just to snare the heart of many religions is never real and why is it never real? This video might be a little bit long, so you have to just please bear with me because I need to punch holes in everywhere. It would be stupid of you to just be born into this world and believe that there is a God in heaven who is going to solve any problem for you. When you watch Mosiah movies, for people who watch movies, any Christian movies, they give us this illusion of how things and the best way you can move people is to show them things that you have once preached to them in a particular movie or through your music music can uplift your spirit if you want to know whether music uplifts spirits just sit down pay attention if you're a lover person a loving person listen to all selling Dion music you begin to see yourself in that realm if you pay attention to our lyrics so when you see religious people sing a, something about God, are you key yourself into that euphoria, believing that if you sing it consistently and you pray and you believe, do you understand? See, the word believe itself is a false, is fake. When you are asked to believe something that has never come, it is the sheer arrogance of human beings that people should even sit down and believe something. Why should you believe? You shouldn't. That's the real sense of it. You shouldn't. See, read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. There are so many things there that were, were mentioned. 
that has happened. And up till now, we have not found it happen. I have not seen where fire descend on people in reality. That the Holy Ghost descend on them. If the Holy Ghost descend on Peter and the other disciples and the people who gather at the Pentecost, shouldn't it be descending on every individual who believe in that same God right now? Or maybe the God they believe now is fake as compared. So let's differentiate this thing. I'm going to split this thing into two today. One, if we go by the definition of religion, according to the concept that was given to us by the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, you will understand now that nobody is worshipping any God anymore. So to speak, if you are a Christian today, number one, there's nobody that is supposed to be a Christian. When you ask people these days, who are you? The first thing they want to talk about is their religion. I'm a Christian. Why are you a Christian? You are born in Nigeria into maybe ethnic family, Ibibio family, Yoruba family, Awosa family, Ibo family, or whatever family. And you were asked, who are you? And the first thing you said is, I'm a Christian. Is Christian your state of origin or whatever? I don't understand. Let's now even assume that being a Christian means that you are worshipping one true God according to how you guys fool each other. What does Christianity mean? Christianity, according to the definition, are called, is it a Christ-like or people who worship God the same way Christ had taught them? Or little Christ. Christo, Christian. You know, if you check the Greek meaning and the dictionary meaning, and if you go into religion, see, the main reason why I can sit down here and talk about religion is because I've studied the Bible. Since I was young, I grew up a Christian. I became a teacher, even in church. I studied the Bible. I understood the Bible. And I went into what religion is all about. And how religion was best into this world. That was when I began to find the loopholes. So religion is like a beautiful surface. The beautiful surface is what you see. But by the time you break all the ties on the beautiful surface, you are going to see the cemented floor. If you break the cemented floor, you are going to get to where you will have the cemented uh, sand and small particles of blocks. If you break that, you will get to where the sand is. If you pull up the sand, heap it up, you might eventually find refuse. Even if you pull out the refuse, you might eventually start finding the dead bones that had been covered. So religion is like a pile of lies in different layers. Pile of lies. So what they painted at the top at the surface is the beauty that will convince you to believe that religion is all you are seeing. But in the real sense of it, if you dig deep and deep and deep, you begin to see all the falsehood in religion. You begin to see all the lies that have been covered up and painted with the beautiful ties, with beautiful paints, with beautiful designs. So many people who haven't dig deep would not understand what religion is. But even if you don't dig deep, this is how you can even understand that religion is a lie. According to the scripture itself, because in my first video I said, even if I'm going to be debunking Christianity, Islam and whatever, I'm going to be using their scriptures. Why I won't be talking much about Islam is that I believe, like I said in my first video, that Islam is like the abridged version of Christianity. When the people of the Arab felt that you know, Christianity is really making waves, gaining power, giving people enormous wealth and power. They have to come with their own concept too. And their concept have to first debunk what Christianity is by claiming that their own religion is superior to Christianity. But the real sense is that there is no way a fake can be better than another fake. An abridged fake cannot be better than an abridged fake. I quite remember... In the same scripture. So, if you read the Bible, in the book of Psalm 11, it was written that uh, from verse 3, Psalm 11, verse 3, when the foundation are destroyed, what shall the righteous do? Many preachers are taking these things and use it to show that when the foundation are destroyed, there is nothing the righteous can do. They are left in a hopeless, a hopeless situation. And that is the same situation religion led people. Because the foundation of religion was wrong. Number one, you have to first ask, 
Why is it that the people who killed your so-called Messiah are the one who is the head of the church today? The same Roman people who was claimed to have nailed Christ on the cross of Calvary are the one who is topping the aircutter and the head of all missionaries in this world. The Pope is the number one religious person. He's even like the mouthpiece of God who is speaking on behalf of God and Christ. According to how they used to even mention the hierarchy, the head unit is God. The one that follows is Christ, then the Holy Spirit, then the Pope. Can you effing imagine that? That the Pope is like the fourth in the realm. He's the mouthpiece of God. So the Pope is like the human God who the spiritual God passed message through to probably deliver to the dim bats who are so-called religious. So there are so many questions that we ought to be talking about today. Number one, religion, is it true or not? So in, the, in my last episode, I said I was going to be talking about a particular story, the story of Ananias and Sapphira. So, I'm going to be reading the story of Ananias. I think I should even read it in the NIV, New International Version, to you so that it can be clear. And you can read it from your King James, or should I say Queen James? If you want to know about the story of King or Queen James, uh, go to Google and ask, why was King James named Queen James? The person who wrote the Bible, King James, for you, is the same man who practiced why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. He practiced homosexuality, according to research, to the extent that he was even nicknamed Queen James instead of King James. He has a man who used to... Let's not go detail into that details. You see, if you want to really understand this word, listen to everything that you've been told, but question it, research it, and find out if it, if it was true or not. But it's just that the ability of not wanting to find out something, because you are scared of what you might find out, is what kept a lot of people were snared into religion up to now. Let me go into the details of the story of Ananias and Sapphira, because one of the things that upset me the most is this story. See, I'm going to be reading the Acts of Apostles, chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. So just follow me. I'll be putting the script beside me. Now a man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, also sold a piece of land, or uh, a piece of property with his wife full knowledge. He kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and he put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept yourself some of the money you received from the land? Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think what make you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied to just human, to just human beings, but to God. People lie to God every day, just uh, they lie to human beings every day. So if there is a God, if we are created in the image of God truly, definitely we lie to God on a daily basis. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died, just like that, a pie. And great fear seized all who heard what had happened. Then some young men came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried him out and buried him. After three hours later, his wife came in. Why did the wife come in? You know that these whole stories was cooked up. But I like it because the people who cook all these stories, the whole Bible story, they were smart during their time, but not at this age and time, when knowledge has become broader and broader. Where people can... I was at home one day, one of my first son was asking me. I said, my dad, I think he went to his mother first, asked his mother, why can't we see God? How do we know God exists? I was shocked. I was in the parlor then in the city room. My wife told him to come and ask his dad because they used to believe I'm the pantomance of knowledge, the person who knows it all. When he came, I was already afraid of what I was going to tell him. But I told him the truth. I said, I don't know. 
And that's the truth. Because when you are not arrogant enough to lie to somebody or to tell people about things you don't know. In Nigeria, yeah, especially in, among Yoruba, when you own your bread, which means you are cooking lies, you are just splitting, uh, spilling lies out from your, your mouth. But when he came to me, walked up to me and asked me the same question, why can't we see God? I said, I don't know. He asked me again if God did exist. I said, I don't know. Because that's the truth. Because I'll be stupid if I say God exists and yet he doesn't exist. And I'll be stupid to say he doesn't exist, yet he exists. So, severally, I will be very careful on what I tell people about things I do not clearly know. I've not seen before. I've not had experience of it before. So let me continue this shabby story recorded in the book of Acts of Apostles chapter 5. And Ananias has died now. So let me even summarize the story from the beginning. It happens that Ananias and Sapphira was part of the people who were gathered together, supposedly gathered together. And they were said to have a piece of land. If you read the Acts of Apostles, let me go back to Acts of Apostles chapter 4. Verse 32. Chapter 4, verse 32. I'm going to come back to this story. Because this is what led to this whole thing. According to uh, uh, Acts of Apostles, chapter 4, verse 32, all believers were in one heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possession was their own, but they shared everything they had. This was the genesis of the whole world. People gathered together. They didn't form that, okay, this car belongs to me, where there is no car then. This house belongs to me, this landed property belongs to me, this food belongs to me. They were sharing everything together like brother and sister. A kind of gesture or an habit or a culture that will never last. Even if you bring it up into this world, it will never last. Especially when we have people with different mindsets, greedy mindset, uh, self-centeredness, selfishness and stuff like that. People are designed differently. We were raised from different backgrounds. In fact, we were wired, wind up differently. Why? Because the people who came before us are the ones that formed us. Take, for example, my father and my mother formed me. So if you believe that one God created you, you are a liar. Nobody created you. Your father mate with your mother. Mate. Mate. Have had intercourse. They slept with each other. If I'm to probably go literal, they slept with each other. They fuck each other. And they conceived of a baby. And you were born after nine months, eight months, seven months, depending on whenever you, you were pushed out or whenever you chose to come out from your mother's womb. That's how people were formed. So when you sit down and say, God created me, you must be an idiot or a liar. Is it that you are so ignorant of how you were bet, or you are an ardent liar? So I said, you can prove it to me and tell me how God formed you. I don't understand how you could have been formed. So these are people who gather together, who claim to have been serving God after Christ was uh, nailed on the cross of Calvary, killed, ascended, to, I mean, resurrected, and ascended to heaven. According to the story, this way. All the things that I'm going to be putting out to you from the scripture are stories that were written. At least, if we look at it, the scripture contains of 43% of narratives or stories, maybe 23% of uh, prose discourse, and uh, how many percent of the other poetry, whatever thing that are scattered from Genesis to Revelation. But for people who understood the Bible, who have studied the Bible, they will understand what I'm talking about. But if you are just a judge goer, who just pick up the Bible and then just read from one verse or one, your pastor, who is a pulpit liar, stand at the podium and just give you one verse and you run with it, you won't understand. For you to be able to understand me, you have to study the Bible. That's what I used to tell a lot of people that I speak to. Study the Bible. Pay attention to details. Ask questions. And whenever you study the Bible, whatever you read, bring it to, the, to this world, to the present time where you live, and see if it checked out. In my first episode, I think I used the uh, titration, chemistry. So this is a phone. I'm using another phone to probably record. I have 
close to like four or five phones here. Yes. Five phones here. Yes. And they were designed by different... The one I'm using to record now is Techno. This is an Infinix uh, uh, Pro 11, uh, uh, Note 11 Pro. This I'm using, uh, what was it called? Uh, Techno Spark 10 Pro to record. I have uh, a, another tablet here. I have another... Um, What's it called? HP. No, HP. No. Um, what was the name of this brand? Well, um, well, I forgot, you know. But I just have different brands here. And I can tell you for a fact that they were designed by different companies, but they were given specific tasks. And everything they claim that they do is what they do. If they tell me this phone can do something, yes, it can. Because the people who design them will not lie. So how come the people who form religion lied about everything? So these people were gathered together now. All believers were in one heart and one mind, which is a lie. Except they were all mad at the same time. Or maybe the, let's even assume for a second that the Holy Spirit actually descended on them. They were, might be with one heart and one mind because the Holy Spirit has occupied them. It's not functioning in the same way. Holy Spirit is one. So it's functioning in one unit in their mind and heart. And if that was true, that might be in the olden days, in, the, in those times. It's not functioning like that now, where pastors are fighting pastors. Pastors are beating up. Beat. There's this story here where I think, if I can find it, I'll put it here. A pastor beat up another pastor because he advised him not to be sleeping with other people's wife in the congregation. So the senior pastor beat up the assistant pastor. Physical fight, too. These are people with... Anyway, let me go back to what I was reading. So, Ananias and Sapphira were part of those people who were gathered, according to the story. So they now felt like, oh, if people are sharing things that they have, let us also share what we have. They have a piece of land. And they decided to go and sell it. And they promised that they are going to bring the money to the feet of the apostles so that the money can be shared among the people in the fold who do not have. And if you look at it, they didn't say they were just sharing things. They were sharing to people who do not have. Very beautiful concept, but it won't last. That's just the truth. So this set of couple went, they have a piece of land, so they went to sold, sell it. So they went, sold the land. So when they were coming back, I think they both agreed that ah, maybe we shouldn't give all this money to the apostle. Perhaps we should remove small. So they removed part of the money and they give the remaining. But the Holy Spirit in Peter, that Holy Spirit that has been reigning since that time, that likes to collect what doesn't belong to it, what he never works for. The greed of human being to sit down in a place and be collecting other things from other people. You understand? Like somebody posted today, let me read that one, that you earn 100,000 naira. If you are not an idiot, Said your income per month is 100k. You are living in one room apartment. Your children are attending public schools. But to be blessed by God, you are sowing seed to somebody, to someone who is living in Bayana Island in Ikoi. Ikoi, for people who are outside the country might be watching this. Ikoi, Bayana Island is the most expensive place to live in Nigeria. This is not just in Lagos. So I live in a state called Lagos. So Ikoi Bayana Island is side where I live. But it's the most expensive place to live in the country, in the whole Nigeria. There's nowhere apartment or houses are more expensive than Bayana Island at Ikoi. So for you to be living there, you must be part of the uh, most influential, not just rich. You are rich and filled with we are filled with affluence and influence. You are not just with affluence. You are very, very influential. People who matters are the ones who live there. So your pastor lived there, but you, you are still living in one bedroom apartment in a very rural, very rough area. Your children even attend public school. But you are, your income every month is 100,000 naira. but you still pay 10% of that to somebody who lives in Bayana Island. This person said, uh, 
Your pastor live in Bayana. Uh, so you say to someone who live in Bayana Island in Ikoi, Lagos, riding 2023 Range Rover amidst these Benz cars with his children schooling abroad. Mm, they say you should continue. Your mumu no be for here. The, uh, the, your stupidity wasn't just something that came to you. It was bought for you. Mm, you inherited it from your parents. If you are still donating money to church, I, I said it one day. I said, if we are to go by how much people have used to help other people build their franchise, this business center that they are building around that they are calling church, if we are to go by it, because even the building is not the church, it is the garden of the people. Go and read out of Apostle chapter 7, verse 48. Out of Apostle chapter 17, verse 24. You will, it's clearly written there that God doesn't dwell in the house built by human's hand. According to even the scripture of Christ that was written, he said that he wants to pull down the tabernacle that took them 45 years to build. And he claimed that he was going to build it in three days. I think it was the time they went there and discovered that they, were, they have turned the tabernacle to a marketplace, which is what we have right now, where people are selling and buying. So if you are still going to church today because you are making business, because of the population, because the population is money, trust me. If you are going to church because of the population, we can understand. But if you are going to church because you want to serve one God or because of one salvation, forget it, you are lying to yourself. You are lying to yourself. You are not... Religion has never bet anybody, any good person in this world. It has always given birth to selfish Idiot manipulators who just take advantage of everything at their disposal. So when you go to church, the money you've been saving and you have been investing in people's food in their churches, they want to build churches, they want to build friends, they want to upgrade, they want to buy another land and, and have another franchise, missionary, whatever. All the money you've been spending since you were young, had it been you are smart enough to gather it and invest it, your life would have been better for it now. So you are only using it to help somebody buy a house in a very expensive place, send their children to Harvard, send their children to Yale, to abroad, to go and school, while your own children will become puppets to them, to their own children in the future. As you are become, as you are a puppet, they are the puppeteer dangling you. As you are a puppet to them, your children too will become a puppet to their own children. Because they are grooming their children to grow in the same light, in the same line they are. And you are grooming your children to become fallible, idiot, dim bad, simple things, creating headed. That's what you're building your children to be. If you in China, I love what they do. Take children to church, they kill, they kill you or they jail you. Let every child receive salvation by themselves. Because if salvation was actually true, the God who created us, or who was assumed to have created human beings, will have visited us individually. You guys call him Father. According to the book of Matthew, uh, Matthew forgotten, I forgotten, I will probably look for the verse. They said that we should not call anybody. It was Christ who was even giving us, giving the direction to the people. That the only father we have, I'm a father to two kids. They see me every day. If so, if one God is my father, why haven't I seen him before? Why haven't I heard of him before? Heard from him before? Or even see him? Even if just to probably come in times of dove, like he ap appeared to Elijah in the wilderness when Elijah ran away from Jezebel. <laughs> a prophet really running away from a witch. Anyway, that's another story for another day. So let me continue my story because this story of Ananias and Sapphira is always... It makes me angry all the time. I have landed property. I decided to sell it with my wife so that we can give the proceeds to the faith of the apostles so that they can share the money. He can share the Peter can share the money to the needies in the food. So I decided, me and my wife decided to probably remove part of the money. Keep it. And what did they say happened? And I asked him back. Peter, who has the programming of the Holy Spirit, that CCTV where the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit place inside Peter's head that made Peter saw the vision of how they removed part of the money. Their own land though, and according to Peter here, he even said it here that, didn't it belong to you before it was sold? So he knows that it belongs to them. And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? So, you know, I said, what now made you think of doing such thing? What did he do? I sold land, I removed part of the money. 
just because I said I was going to sell the land and bring the money. So because I removed part of, not all the money, this is not even breaking a promise. So I just removed part of the money. So, and the punishment is death. In answer, you lied not just to human but to God. So when you lie to God, these days you die. <laughs> oh. I just show you the post of Adeboye claiming that Naira will soon be higher than dollar. If it's a, a thinking person, and this man was called a mathematician. Common sense will tell anybody how can the Naira be bigger than the dollar? When I was young in the early 90s, 92, if you go, when we go to the Republic of Benin, then another country very close to us here, Kotonu, so to speak, we used to exchange our five Naira for their Kong Kong. Kong Kong means 25 francs, 25 francs of their money, which means our money is times five bigger than their money. So for you to get 1,000 safer, which is mil front. Mil front means 1,000. So mil front means 1,000 front. So mil, M-I-L-L-E. -L -L -E. So for you to get their mil front, you need our 200 naira here that we called Bon Kong, um, sorry, uh, Akbo Kong in Yoruba language. So, but now, within how many years or how many years, their money is not just almost equal with our money, but even higher in rank than our money. This is a country that have almost nothing. Corruption has so much killed us that we produce nothing. We are just a consuming nature, a nation. We consume almost everything. We see car, we buy. Houses, we buy. Even many people get have houses here. Most of our politicians have houses here in Nigeria that nobody will, is living. And we, we are the capital poverty of the world. We have the numbers of the highest people who live in poverty on a daily basis in Nigeria. Yes, yeah, this is one of the most religious countries in the so-called country. So what is the religious giving birth to? If not rot, if not rubbish, if not lies, if not just to ensnare the mind of people, embezzle them of their needy. And so when they, how will religion even thrive if they don't make you poor? It is when you are poor, you begin to have hope, like Karma said, then religion will now become the only hope that you could rely on so as to become successful. So if you are not religious, how do you now want to have hope? Instead of them to teach you on how to get out of that poverty by engaging yourself, learning one trade or learning one skill so that you can become a solution or a, 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 a problem solver that can help you generate revenue. No, they are teaching you to be praying. There is a neighbor here beside us this morning. Every time I talk to my neighbor, uh, his wife, so to speak, she's always like, uh, God will fight for me, God will fight for me. So this morning she was praying, my wife came to tell me what she was praying. Apparently one of our daughter or one of our child is sick and it was questioning God. I don't even want to talk about that prayer. It was kind of, you see, the, the way they brainwash people. Now, I stopped going to church since 2018. I can't remember the last time I prayed. I don't think I have any problem bigger than what other people are facing here in Nigeria. So if the power supply, if the power would should interrupt our power supply, it affects everybody. If the weather is not good, it affects everybody. If we have corrupt government, it affects everybody. It doesn't matter who you are, you are being affected. So instead of solving problem, we are based, we are developed and trained and groomed and given this orientation of being a believer. Most times when people ask me, are you a Christian? I will say no. Are you a Muslim? I will say no. And say, ah, you must be a traditional worshiper. I say, must I worship something? The, that's the question. Instead of relieving yourself, join the Scientology people, the people who do research, people who don't, out of sheer arrogance, just assume they know it all. One person will stand on the podium and be saying, my, my daddy said I should. Who is, who's daddy? Even if God is everybody's daddy, he should not be our daddy. He has never said our daddy. He will say, my, my father, my daddy. Who's daddy? All this sheer arrogance that we find in religiosity, it needs to douse down. Anyway, the children that are coming up now are beginning to ask questions. So let me continue my story because I won't finish this story if I continue to rant. So when Ananias said this, he fell down and died. The great fear, the great fear sees all who heard what happened. 
That's what the Holy Spirit does to them. It creates fear in them, no problem. The young man came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried him out and buried him. So somebody lied and they die. Just hold it. That is out of Apostle chapter 5, verse 5. I'm reading from verse 1 to 11. So that is chapter 5. Person lied. Somebody lied and they died. So if person lied now, now to just die, that's it. So that is 5 and 6. So 7 said, after three hours, his wife came in. Number one, the wife and the husband went to sell the land. Why is it that the husband was the first person who came? Okay, maybe the wife went to uh, Oyibo Market to buy fish. So uh, about three uh, hours later, the wife came in not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? A prophet, a so-called apostle, asking me a question, how much I sold my own land. See that arrogance. The land that I even bought before I even began, began to follow your so-called false movement. We owned, maybe I kill somebody, buy the land, said nobody know. However, you know, they don't even know how I got the money to acquire the land in the first place. And now I'm being questioned on how much I sold the land. So and, and the wife, Safira, is now being questioned now if this is the piece of sliver or gold or whatever was delivered to Peter then was the actual price that the land was sold. So Peter asked her, tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? Yes, she said, that's the price. Peter said to her, how could you conspire to test the spirit of the Lord? Listen, the feet of men who, borrowed, who buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out also. So Peter was even the one who pronounced death on Sapphira. That's what they know how to give. If not death, what else? They take all your money, put you in limbo. You are suffering, they ask you to stay there. You are a woman, your wife is beating, your husband is beating you every day. Your pastor will tell you that divorce is it's not, it's prohibited in Christianity. You are a man, you are not happy with your marriage. They just ask you to keep enduring pain. As if another day is going to be given to you as an extra time. I don't understand. So this one pronounced that, that the feet of the people who carry the husband out are still by the door there. They will come and carry her too. At that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. If that is what it takes to die, we need the lives of Peter at Asso Rock, at Abuja in Nigeria. Because all our pastors here, yeah, they know if you do shishi. They don't get anything. If anybody tells you they have power, it's a lie. I've seen many people see me down and some idiots lay hands on them. Say they are praying. Ah. Well, I used to tell people if everybody's like me, the world will, will be boring, but will be safer. So uh, Safira also died. Then the young man came in, according to how Peter has predicted, finding her dead body, finding her dead, carried her out and buried her beside her husband. At least they buried him. Great fear sees the old church and all worried about these events. So now, let's assume that the story that I just read now was true. Ananias and Sapphira promised the, the money from the landed property they sold to the apostles so that it can be shared. Then when they were coming back, they removed part of it. They now lied to Peter. And uh, because they lied, they die. If God is true, that same Holy Spirit that was killing these ones are supposed to be killing people in church on a Sunday basis. Apart from the fact that they even changed the time of worship, which was, which was supposed to be the Sabbath. And the Sabbath is Saturday. Saturday is the Sabbath day, not Sunday. I was having a debate with some of the Catholic people. They said, eh, there's this one man who doesn't use his head to think, his brain to think, said, eh, the main reason why they changed it is because and eh, you know, Jesus Christ died on Friday and he woke up on Sunday after the third. So to, to commemorate the time he resurrected, we now, they now shift. I said, I don't know that the word of God has become a debate. Or, at least they said God is an autocratic person. 
I don't know when it becomes democracy, democracy where people can debate without even question asking them. They just move the date of the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday, which is the first day of the week. So the last day of the week, a lot of people don't even know. I once asked my landlord here before. When my landlord too is a, I think an archbishop, whatever, in their diocese. One day he was now preaching Christ to me. I looked at him. I said, which day is the first day of the week? He said, Sunday. I said, which day is the last? He said, Saturday. I said, did your God not give you order that you should worship him on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath day? He said, yes. I said, why are you not worshiping him on the first day of the week? He kept quiet. It was not like, eh, I wanted to make flimsy excuse. I just said, well, because you are one of the liars. You guys lie to each other. So, all this old charade, show of charade, are just like a show of who, who is more prominent, who has the sweetest tongue, who can convince people the more. Nobody. So if God was truly, truly, it was, if this story were truly something that happened in reality, why is it not happening now? People are sleeping with each other in the place of worship. Pastors are sleeping with married women. One of the sins that they claim that their God forbid so much, we're sleeping with married women on the podium where they preach the so-called word of God. Thunder did not strike them dead there. They are not... People like to... They come and they say testimony time. People lie during testimony. People are even being paid to come and give false testimony. They didn't die. It was Ananias and Sapphira that can die. Just because they sold their own landed property, their own property. People these days used to chance church, collect church properties. Church sometimes even challenge people. Let's say I'm, a, I'm one of the idiots now. Instead of building my house for myself, I went, I'm like, I was a redeemed, uh, you know, members for 18 years. Let's now assume that. I want to start my own church and I'll register it under Redeem. Bought the land in Redeem's name and stuff. Redeem now chance me in the future to collect the land. Land that I bought with my own money. I'm the one who also run around to do the gathering of sheep. The idiots who just know how to follow. That's why I said, see, many people in this world were born to come and just fill space. They don't have. They were just here to just follow, follow, follow people. That's why when you go online, you see this one follow. People who even deserve to be followed are not followed. Check the numbers of people who are subscribed on my station. Despite the fact that I give people back to back knowledge that can as well change their life and have positive impact in their life, they won't follow. But if it is just a girl showing boobs and just singing and doing face like this on TikTok, you have like 5 million followers just following. So you discover that even people, that's why when people are suffering, I don't really have much pity on them. There are so many people that I know today that are suffering. You are suffering. You have not even have enough to feed yourself, but you give birth to five children. Are you mad? Is that no madness? After you have created a problem by yourself, your number one, your parents create problem by giving birth to you and not giving you the necessary resources that you have. Necessary tools, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding elude you. You do not you do not have any skills whatsoever. You don't know how to talk, you don't know how to solve problems. And at the end of the day, you just grow up in age and you felt like okay, I'm age enough now to get married. You get married and begin to create more and more problems. And that's how we land we land where we are now. And uh, how best are you to solve your problem? Because you are looking for a substituting. Let's go into mathematics now. A substituting method of solving your problem rather than facing your problem elsewhere and see what you can do to rescue yourself from the charade or from the from the stupidity that you put yourself into. No, you are now looking for one God who does miracle. Is there a miracle working God? You now go to one fold where they are singing that kind of stupid songs. Is a miracle working God? You sat down there, you spent before you know it, you spent 10, 15, 20 years, 30 years in church, and your life remained the same. If not even worse for it, because it's going to be worse for it. The little money you have been able to gather 
you believe it, church is now MMM. The pastor will give you lumber that, okay, we'll bring 100 naira so that God can multiply your pocket. Too. The remaining 1,000 in your pocket, you felt like, oh, MMM, oh, let me drop this 1,000. If I drop 1,000, God will now provide one idiot like me that will now come and give me 100,000 naira. You must be a fool, a, a big fool. You go to church all the time. They use your money to build cathedrals. They need your money to buy private jets. They use your money to buy Bahana Island type of houses. They buy houses here yeah, in Port Harcourt, in Calabar, at Abuja, at, in America, in UK. They have many properties without having to work for it, just by standing in place of God's messenger. This same God that even they, them, they have not seen before. They've not heard of before. And I've encountered so many of them. I remember when my mother forced me to go to see one pastor one time. The pastor now finished praying. He was now narrating the story I narrated for my mother. I narrated this story to my mother like a few months ago. My mother went, narrated the same story to him. He called me to come and see him. That was then. I went as I was there. He finished praying. I was laughing. He said, why am I laughing? He said, God has shown him something that I have. Then I wasn't married. That I had a girlfriend. She's yellow in color. I said, what an idiot. I was the one who told this story to my mother. And I've spoken to her. She already told me that she told you. So you are telling me back my own story. And you are asking me. And you expect me to believe that one, one deity has spoken to you. Well, my mother no longer go to that church. She's going to, she's going to another one. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my mother is one. One. One of those people who was who was born into this world to call, go and follow pastor. <laughs> and when she was attacked spiritually, it wasn't the pastor that healed her. <laughs> Let's not go to that story. So, but the truth is just that when people sat down, okay, let me give you another story. I'm supposed to, I thought it was started scratching. What's it called? Though? This uh, I was supposed to even talk about. You know, there are so many things I want to talk about. I've not even started talking about things that I'm supposed to talk about. Probably I will have to probably shift this to part three because today I'm in the part two. I'm supposed to be coming with Bible verse that can debunk each other. One Bible verse that says this, another one that debunk it. The same Bible verse, the same word of God, who contradicting each other. It's like me now giving myself blow here, here. And I'm saying that this hand is stronger than this hand, and I, I can't punch it myself. So maybe next time, uh, when I come, I'm going to be talking about, you know, uh, what was it called? I'm going to be talking about the Bible verses that can be born. But before I go, let me show you something. I remember, uh, let me just quickly talk about this. This is a, uh, this happened in 20, 2018. It was one of the so-called church in Nigeria here. This one, they used to catch with you. They are the one who tell story. They can pray. Ah, everybody. Nigerians who are listening to this will have understand which of them. They are called the Mountain of Fire and Miracle Ministries, MFM. So a few years ago, they filed a lawsuit against Sarah Reporter. Everybody will know Sarah Reporter. Owns by show, Omoyele show. They fire a lawsuit against Sarah Reporter and the Omoyele show uh, and the Sarah Reporter Media Foundation over a series of false malicious and defamatory publications against the ministry and its general overseer, their so called Dr. D. Ulukoya, or whatever. You know, the story trend then. But at the same time, you know, if you go back to the so called, uh, uh, what's it called? If you go back to so called religion or their so called core tenets, the core strength and knowledge of their so called religion, which is the Bible, the scripture. If you read the book of uh, First Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 1 to 11, you know, let me go and read it for you. Uh, First Corinthians, okay, let me go here, I think. Uh, First Corinthians, let me go to them. Uh, 
so first corinthians chapter 6 so i'm going to be reading from chapter 6 verse 1 to 11. so i will be ending it here with this he said if any of you have a dispute with another do not dare to take it before the ungodly for judgment instead of before the lost people and uh, or do not or do you not know that the lost people will judge the world and if you are to judge the world are you not competent to judge tribal cases do you not know that we will judge angels how much more things of this world that's their bible saying this so therefore if you have dispute about such matter do not ask for a ruling from those whose way of life is conned in the church mm. i say this to shame you is it possible that there is nobody among you wise enough to judge a dispute between believers so you can read to verse 11 but like i know people will come and say ah that is mfm now showure might not be uh what is it called showure might not be a believer but obviously i know my relation with is a christian or uh, he might not practice but he's not a practicing christian or probably he has dumb d so let's now go to another bible verse because according to the word we are called brothers and sisters according to their so-called christian books whether you are a believer or not that's why whenever a believer wants to come and preach to you they will say a brother they will call address you they are trying to siphon you like psychologically introduce that way of life because even if religion is supposed to be a way of life there are so many things that could have been removed from it because a lot of things doesn't follow but there are still so many wisdom things that we can learn from their so-called scripture but it doesn't mean we should say god spoke it there are so many words that i've spoken that are wisdom word to people and um i didn't speak on behalf of any god i spoke from my mind so but the book of matthew chapter 18 verse 15 said if your brother sins against you go and tell him his fault and between you and him alone if he listens to you you have gained your brother 16 said but if he does not listen take one or two among one or two others along with you that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses there are so many bible verses that speak about you know that speak about against what the so-called church did so according to ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 he said be kind and compassionate to one another forgiving each other just as in christ god has forgiven you so people who claim all this who preaches all this through this text will probably have somebody to offend them and they sue him to court and you see the funny thing is just that people have been going to church lies upon lies have been debunked by from all these pastors even the some of the other christian idiots who came to debunk some other idiots are also idiot themselves one will tell you that uh, tight is not to be paid tight is not good it is sinful to pay tight uh, the book doesn't say you should pay tight and him too he doesn't he understood the bible that the tight is not but he doesn't understand that Ma, uh, matthew chapter 6 let me read it chapter 6 verse 22 matthew 6 chapter uh, chapter 6 verse let me read from 21 so 21 said for where you're okay let me even start from maybe uh 20 matthew 6 20 says but okay uh 18 okay let me start from 18 or uh, 19 matthew 6 19 says do not store up do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where mouths and vermin destroys where tears breaking and steal said but store up your treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal and 21 says for where your treasure is 
there your heart will also be. And 22 now said, the eyes is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. The same Bible, but if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If the, then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? So many people are in darkness today. And they believe they are in light. Because what is light? The truth. How things are supposed to be. I am a guy. Somebody is, else is a boy, a girl, a woman, an age woman, an age guy. What am I? I can tell people this is who I am. This is what I do. I'm a YouTuber. I'm a graphic artist. I'm a web administrator. I'm a this, I'm a that. But if I tell you that I'm the son of Jan Dangote or son of Etodela or son of uh, Mike Adenuga, I will be lying. No matter how much I wish to be. If I am not, I am not. So when you are telling yourself things that cannot be, things that can never be, you will have a problem now. you go to a church, they will tell you that uh, trust in the Lord. Wait on the Lord, be of Jesus shall strengthen. I just hope that people are going to get out of down from their high horse someday and start facing the reality that no religion whatsoever is the truth. I've seen Muslim people, Islam people here now. They did 14 days fasting and 9 BG in our street. Their life is not better for it. And let nobody fucking scripture tell you that prayers are store up. Prayer store up where? How? People who pray die. So if I die tomorrow now, does that mean because I don't believe in one concept of a deity? And I don't believe not because I say that it doesn't exist that way. It's because I have not heard. I have not seen. It can be proven. No one can tell me that you are seeing God or heard from God. Everybody here from their own psychology, their own mind, and they, they believe God is speaking to them. There are so many thoughts that run through my mind on a daily basis. Shall I now say God is the one giving me the concept? And if there is a God giving me such concept, what is the concept that is giving me? The book of Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 to 46, explain it. If you read the old book of Matthew chapter 25, it's just that be nice to the next person beside you. Don't try to cheat them. Don't take advantage of them. Don't destroy their life. Help them when they are, they are in need. Whatever you have done for them, you have done it for, for God. And that is what is going to earn you heaven. These days, are people even trying to go to heaven by going to church? They don't give to the needy. They don't help the needy. They don't visit sick people. Pastors don't even do the same thing. Not to talk of the people that he pastors over. You understand? There are wisdom words in the scripture that could have been taken and it could have been useful to us. But quite unfortunate, they don't, people don't follow. So what is now the essence of you calling yourself a Christian when you are a liar? You pray all your life, nothing happens. There is a church who once said that people should not watch the TV, should not do this. This, this same science and technology that religious people will even go against. And it's the same one that is providing them tools to enable them to propagate their so-called rubbish. Science and technology de design aeroplane. The private jet that they are all crying and dying to buy. Science and technology design, design it, not religion. Science and technology design phones, mobile lines, and all the, the beautiful advanced technology that we have these days. What has religion done, really? Than to tell us things that are not. Than to lie to us, siphon money from us, and destroy life of a lot of people. I've, I know a lot of pastors whose life have been destroyed all in the name of the fact that they want to serve one God. Pastors even, they destroy themselves. They badmouth themselves. They plan backbiting all sorts of war. They wage wars against themselves. They fight for positions in the church. By the time you understand the church, you go into them. That's when you understand human beings. I attend CDA meeting every weekend in my area here. Community Development Association. And what every time we want to start, they will pray. And they will lie to themselves in the same meeting. And they, will, they are afraid. And after lying, they didn't die like Ananias and Sapphira died. Though. They used to lie. Maybe when I come next time, because I can keep doing religious 
topic from now to the end of my life, I will not be true. There are so many lies to debunk. But I just know that if there is any pastor in this world today, me, I, I didn't just said it, that every pastor in this world today are liars. And the one that claim to have powers have visited Babalawos. They have sp- visited the same spiritualists that they condemn that are evil are the one they are going to, to collect power from. But the other physical power they have, trust me, they have. They have power. If I gather one million people under my name and they listen to me, I am a very powerful person. Because if I tell one million people to descend or Let's say, for instance, I'm a pastor and I have close to one million people under my fold that listen to their geo. If I have issue with First Bank and I tell my church that the First Bank is evil bank, that people should not bank with them. Do you know how much ripple effect that will cause to First Bank? That's the power they have. Who gave them this power? Men gave other men powers. You sit down here, you gather yourself, You donate your hard-earned money for somebody, one person. One person is the GO of a church. I'm not sure there is uh, all those big churches we have in Nigeria now. I'm not sure any bank has as much as money as those church control. I I can never be sure. The richest bank in this world cannot be as rich as the, the less denominated church in the world. So if we, if we look at Nigeria now, we have rich banks. We have the likes of First Bank, GT Bank, Zenith Bank. The richest out of them, even if they match the third theory that I mentioned now, GT Bank, Zenith Bank, First Bank, they match all their wealth. I'm not sure they have one quarter of what to redeem Christian church control. I'm not sure. But these are money that cannot be audited. They are an NGO, a non-governmental organization. They don't pay task. People go there, donate money. They use it to buy private jets. They buy houses. Uh, they claim to be doing one false charity or the other, which they are not even doing. They build schools. Their members cannot attend. The less privileged in the school, the, in the so-called fold, cannot attend. They have hospitals. People can attend. The rich and mighty are the one that... See, if you sit down and pay attention to the way of the world, you understand that. It is the majority who are idiots that put food at the table of the little who are non-eligible. So if you don't know that by now, well, sorry is your case. Uh, until I come your way next time, my name is Remain Adin Yoju, and you're watching Future ABC Media Online TV. And this is the part two of religious, religion versus spirituality. And like I used to say at the end of my video, please like my video, please comment, pay attention, don't... If you want to fight me, you can come. Me, I love fights. It's just that I don't abuse people like some idiots. If you are, if you pay attention to watch my video, I can abuse you. No matter how much you fight me, I will explain to you. And you will only be make an idiot by yourself because if I explain something to you and you cannot give me clear evidence of what, why something seems wrong about the way I said it or about what I said, whether it's the story of Naira. And if you want to debate me on... Christianity, please bring it up. I've been a Christian since I was young. I'm in my 40s. And I've been reading the Bible since I was seven. So tell me, if you want to bring out the Bible, I was a Bible teacher. So there's nothing you want to tell me about religion that I don't understand. I understand the religion for what it is. And I even dig deep to understand the genesis and the invention of it. So for you to even come and say you want to come and debate, well, maybe just, but I can debate anyone on anything religion. You can tell me, they say Moses stretched his staff to the Red Sea and it's split into two. I have challenged any pastor. We have a very small river in my area here called Oduafa. I've challenged all the pastors in, in this area. Anyone that can split that Odo into two with the name of Jesus or the power of God, then I will, I, will, I will renounce everything that I have and I'll be following that person. That you can go to that, that river and stretch your staff or whatever and point your Bible and Claim that this river should be split in the name of Jesus. And it actually split. Oh, come on. I'll follow you to the kingdom come. Why are you looking at me? My wife is looking at me. She's one of those Christian, Christian sisters. You know, I remember when I got married to my wife. My wife has always been saying that she will, she will get into heaven before me. 
<laughs> That's what she used to say. But now I think she knows better. <laughs> Later, she, she even discovered that the, she thought she was better than me in terms of... But she knows better now. Let me not say much. So, until I come your ways next time, please subscribe, comment, share. And you can also call me directly if you have any question. And if you have any way of helping, I'm still looking for help. I'm not one of those people that will come and say, I want to share, blah, 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 pray for you. What I do is just to come online, use my knowledge to help people reshape their life, to bring out provoking conversations that can strike the debate where we can both sit down. We can all sit down to deliberate and ask this question, what is right, what is wrong? So, but if you have any way of assisting me, of helping me personally, I'm not asking for help so that I can hit. But I need help in order to help promote my video, in order to encourage me to do more video. I need help for gadgets. I need help for office space so that I can design. I can have a beautiful design uh, studio that I can be using for my video and to buy all the necessary gadgets instead of using my phones. No, my phone is still doing the job, bro. I need something better that can... And I will probably need something that can help me employ the profession of editors. I do edit my video myself. It's not as if I'm not I'm that bad in editing, but it's just that the editing could have been, you know, attention could have been given to the editing because now I, I ought to have even resumed work now. This is after three. I used to resume work uh, by three every day and I close by 12 a.m. or 1 a.m. in Nigerian time here. I, I work for my friend in America, so... I work as a graphic artist too. So if you have any job too, you can always call me for graphic artist. Or if you want to set up a website or whatever, you can always give me the job. But it will, it will please me if I see people who call my line, either normal phone call or WhatsApp call, so we can deliberate on things that I have spoken about or things that I've said things that they disagree on it, they don't have time, they can, as well, put it at the comment section. Until I come your way next time, with a part three of this video, I'm going to be doing a part three, which is going to be all Bible verse. We're going to be dealing with the Bible. The, the, you know, the inconsistency in the Bible, and to be dealing with some of the lies. But any pastor who tell you that he's a man of God is lying to you. He just wants to collect your tithe, your offering, they want to collect money from you. It's as simple as that. And if your wife is fine, if you take your wife to church, your pastor will sleep with your wife. That's what they do. The old ones who can't sleep with your wife will turn your wife to a puppet. They will use them for, their, for the growth of their own organization, for the growth of their franchise. So many people's marriage have been destroyed today because of religion. Well, that's their own. But I just always urge people, use this most of the time. As a human being, when you came, you came with nothing. Everything you know today was infused into you by force. Uh, even Muslim, Islam people, they take their children to so-called Islamic school. They came lies into their head. So how else will they not become extremists at the end of the day? Well, if they ask you, who oh, talk am, talk am, say, nah, talk am. But until I see you next time, have a great day and take care of yourself. Bye.